Welcome back as we move on to describe the construction details and operation of a small industrial hydraulic power system. For purposes of demonstration and explanation, we shall feature a unit of the type found in many light industrial applications. The system comprises a power pack, a double acting cylinder, and a four-way open center control valve into which the system's relief valve has been incorporated. Let us first take a closer look at the power pack. The dominant feature is the reservoir, most usually called the tank. The main functions of the tank are to contain the system's oil, to cool the oil, and to support items such as the pump and drive motor. Oil is drawn out of the tank through the suction line by the pump. Oil re-enters the tank via the return line, having flowed through the system. The suction line and the return line are kept separated, most usually with a baffle plate. The baffle effectively slows the internal flow of the returning oil inside the tank, giving it time to cool before it reaches the pump suction inlet. Featured on the tank is an oil level indicator, combined with a thermometer. Tanks are designed to contain large amounts of oil, much more than the circuit requires, primarily to improve cooling. Much heat is generated as the oil flows through the system and is carried back to the tank through the return line. With a large volume of oil, the heat is more readily dissipated. The steel walls of the tank assist in conducting heat out of the oil and thence into the atmosphere. A drain valve is fitted at the bottom of the tank. This is required in order to drain the oil when required. We shall discuss other features of the tank later. Let us now move on to look at the pump. The type of pump used on this system is an external gear pump the simplest of all the pump designs. In principle, the pump operates by the gears rotating in mesh inside a sealed housing. A low vacuum is formed at the point of unmeshing. This results in oil being drawn into the pump housing via the inlet or suction port. Oil, now trapped between the housing and the gear teeth, is carried around the outside of the gears where it is discharged through an outlet port. Oil leaving the pump outlet port flows through the pressure line and along to the next major device, namely the directional control valve. This device on our unit is a three-position manually operated type. The direction of flow and hence the direction of actuator travel will be decided according to the position of the operating lever. When the lever is in the central or neutral position, flow will occur between the valve's pressure port and the return or tank port. When the lever is moved to the extend position, Flow is diverted to the working line connected to the rear of the cylinder. Oil now flows into the cylinder, forcing the ram to extend. Oil on the front end of the piston is forced out of the cylinder, through the opposite working line, and returned to the tank via the valve. When the lever is moved to the retract position, flow is switched within the valve and moves into the front of the cylinder, forcing the ram to retract. Oil on the rear side of the piston is pushed out of the cylinder and back to the tank via the control valve. At this time, we need mention the pressure relief valve. On our model, this is situated within the control valve body, but it may also be incorporated into a pump casing. As with most pressure relief valves, Ours is adjustable. We do, however, urge you not to tamper with pressure settings until you have received the necessary training. Actuators often need to pivot between their anchor points, 
thus the need for flexibility in the working line connections. This need becomes obvious if you watch machines at work. It is usual that working lines, joining into the cylinder connectors, are constructed with flexible, high-pressure hoses. Where no movement is to be expected, or where long runs are required between the power pack and working units, then steel tubing is commonly used. To summarize, the primary components of a hydraulic system comprise the power pack, control devices, actuators, and the necessary connecting hoses and tubing, which include the suction line, the pressure line, working lines, and the return line. After the break, we shall look at important devices incorporated into systems, namely filters. <laughs>